What's up kids? I'm Nick. Welcome to Build Dad Build. We're starting this video off a little different than normal uh, because it wasn't gonna be a video. I just made a table similar to this one and so it seemed it didn't seem like a good piece of content to put up but I've had so many people on social media that have watched the progress of this table ask for a build video that I figured I'd put one together. So this video is gonna start as a build in progress. Things to note going into this video. I start after I've already assembled my table blank. If you wanna see how I did my initial table blank, you can watch that video right here when I do the Punisher table. Things to note that are different than that is in the Punisher table, I assembled it with pocket holes and screws. In this video, I glued the blank together. Second thing to note is I have a new circle jig. If you wanna watch me try and fail in making a circle jig, you can watch that video right here. Other than that, I just want to take a second to thank all my subscribers, my Instagram followers, everybody who asked for this video, really. Uh, I do think there's some good information here. Uh, there's good, some good information on the carving. There's also some good information on uh, pouring epoxy. I have an issue when I'm pouring the epoxy uh, that's later on in the video. I believe I had an aggressive thermogenic reaction. I might be saying that wrong. And for you guys that are tuning in for the first time, do me a favor. Uh, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Uh, I'm just trying to build a, a following of, of, of folks who want to get together and like learn how to make cool shit. Now I'm going to get demonetized. But without further ado, wait, one more ado. All right, please enjoy this video already in progress. Next, I'm gonna run a chamfer around the bottom of the table. Uh, it'll just kind of not make it look as chunky and it'll give it a nice little, little cut back in so it's smooth. Like a baby's butt. I don't know if I go that far, man. My kid's got a little diaper rash sometimes. That ain't smooth. All right, so today we are going to carve that for a client. I'm just using my Dremel with the, uh, the router base uh, and a spiral bit. And my main advice when you're uh, carving something that's a line drawing is to really pay attention to your positive and negative spaces because that can kind of mess with you while you're, uh, while you're carving and you don't want to accidentally carve where there should be positive space. So a lot of times I kind of take a pencil and scribble in the large areas because I'm going to take out a lot of material first and then kind of make work my way to the edges if that makes sense. But Without further ado, let's do this, man. Okay, so here we are. We are like 90% done with the carve. Unfortunately, that last 10% is what takes the longest. Uh, the rust needs to be hand carved, so I will be going in there with, um, my X-Acto knife sucks. So I'll be using uh, my box cutter <laughs> uh, to score where I need to go. And then I'm just literally using a set of uh, hand chisels uh, that I picked up online. I'll link them down below. Uh, they're just, they, they work for what I need them to work for. Uh, they weren't super expensive, but let's do this. We got the carving pretty much done. I'm getting ready to get the torch out. But since I have the circle jig, I, what I'm gonna do is something a little different than I did on the last table. I glued these two back fours together, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out a quarter inch MDF backer to run around the bottom of it. Uh, I'm gonna glue this to the bottom of it, maybe uh, tack it in with a couple of brad nails. And I'm hoping when I do that, all the two by fours don't just fall apart because that would suck a lot. That would suck a lot. 
like a whole lot more than a little. Okay, let's do this. Almost forgot my RZ mask. Don't breathe MDF dust, not good. MDF cuts really easy. Very nice. All right, and that is lunch. Actually, that is a 35 pound weight. I'm going to lunch. All right, so glue is dry. Uh, we're getting ready to burn it. I'm gonna use my detail torch for this. There's just way too many details in there to go crazy willy-nilly with the big boy. Plus, I'm pretty sure that MDF will go up like a stack of matches. Do they make matches anymore? I don't know. Anyway, let's rock this joint. Right, guys we are in my epoxy studio aka uh, one quarter of the kids playroom it's still too hot outside in Houston to let epoxy cure outside uh, so we'll be doing it in here this is the part that makes me nervous some of you guys may be nervous about carving for the first time or something I, I'm okay on carving what I'm not okay with is is pouring epoxy this is this will be my second ish uh, pour ever and it's for a client. So first step is this. I'm gonna take uh, some Starbond I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna look for any areas that may look like they're gonna leak epoxy and I'm gonna seal those up with Starbond. If you watch the Punisher table video, this stuff was a lifesaver. This thing actually helped me find some leaks that would have just completely destroyed the product. So I can't say enough good things about Starbond. This is the black medium thickness. Uh, you can use it to kind of fill voids. I also sometimes I need to grab that. If you have a larger void that your glue keeps like pouring into and filling up, if you spray activator on it first and then do a couple drops of glue, those will solidify faster and give you a little dam without filling everything underneath it. So that's step one. Step two, we're gonna mix up some tabletop epoxy. We are going to use some gold pigment and we're going to fill in our car. Fingers crossed, this makes me nervous. Let's do this. Uh, basically, like I'm looking right here, see where this is a crevice that comes down. I don't want to fill this and have epoxy run that way. So I'm just going to come in with a little bit of CA glue and put it right there. We're going to let that just sit. I'm going to do that right here as well. I still haven't come up with a good way to determine how much surface area is in here and determine how much to mix up. So what I'm gonna do is four ounces of each. It's a one-to-one -one mix. I'm gonna do four ounces of each. This should give me eight ounces. Uh, I think it's gonna be too much, but I don't have I, I don't have a good gauge and the last thing I want is to not have enough. Got my, my Coke spoon here. Uh, we are going to add a half teaspoon of gold to this and see what it looks like. If it's not opaque enough, we will uh, add another half teaspoon and record that way. Uh, so I do have a ratio in case I have to mix up some more. Cool? Cool? I hope you're cool because I am absolutely not cool right now. I'm flipping out a little bit. A little pro tip when you're pouring this, if you don't have the fancy bottles that squirt out the right amount, is to kind of pull back on your pour before you're finished. Um, or you're gonna pour over. I actually poured over a little over four ounces there anyway. So we're gonna try to make that up on the eight ounce mark. Epoxy's slightly forgiving. Epoxy's not really forgiving. All right, 
so the epoxy's been poured and uh, and it's nice and hard. Uh, now we're going to do a penetrating epoxy on the top to seal in this char so it doesn't, uh, so it won't flake off. Because right now if you see, like, it'll turn your finger black. And we don't want to do that. So I'm going to use a total boat uh, penetrating epoxy. Holy sh... Might have a slight issue here with the uh, penetrating epoxy. Oh shit. Okay kids, what did we learn yesterday? Well first we learned that a plastic container such as Hyun filled with that much penetrating epoxy over 20 minutes will melt. <laughs> um, I found out from the guys at Total Boat that mixing up that much epoxy, which was uh, like 16 ounces of the penetrating epoxy, specifically the penetrating epoxy, will cause a, what they like to call, aggressive exothermic reaction. Just FYI, don't mix that much up at a time. Second thing we found out was maybe an order of operations issue, but the penetrating epoxy does not adhere to the regular epoxy at all. It literally just started beating up on all the other epoxy, which is not doing me any favor. So I spent most of the time after initially putting the penetrating epoxy on, wiping it off of the pre-existing uh, epoxy. So either I should have done the penetrating epoxy first, or not at all. Everything looks good. Uh, we didn't ruin anything, which is awesome because I really don't want to carve this again. Uh, but I think what we're gonna do is what we did on the Punisher table. We're literally just gonna do a top coat of tabletop epoxy um, that should seal everything in and we should be good to go from there. Very important to do when you're using a tabletop epoxy that's self-leveling is make sure that the piece is level or it's gonna self level by correcting that and then your tabletop's gonna be out around. All right, so the tabletop is cured for like two days, three days now, two days? What's today, Friday? The tabletop is cured for three days. We're good on that. Now I just need to put the legs on. Uh, we're gonna do three legs. And if you've ever wondered how to get your three legs spaced out correctly, let me show you. Okay, I'm gonna try to ungeometry this as much as possible. You take a compass, you draw a circle. You're gonna take and draw a line through the center of the circle. So I'm just gonna mark here and here. Do not change your compass. You start from either north or south. Go out here, intersect the circle on both sides. And this, this, and this should be a perfect triangle now. I learned this on Mr. Wizard. Actually, I think I learned it from a geometry teacher. It's about the only thing I learned from the geometry teacher. Okay. Now, since that is, uh, obviously we don't want to put our legs in that close, I've measured out to where I want my legs. So we're just gonna take a quick measurement here. And that is, we'll say eight and a half. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna extend lines out to eight and a half for each one of these. Mark that. We're gonna come over and do the same thing on the other two. This is designed to go at an angle. So I don't know what these guys were thinking, but the leg that accepts that, if you screw this in, if you screw it in all the way, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, but it's not flush. I'm either gonna have to drill out a little space for this or uh, maybe we'll take the end off of this. I think we'll probably drill out space if we can. We've got plenty of room to drill into this.
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for, uh, thanks for sticking around. And like I said in the beginning, if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and subscribe. I'm really trying to build a group of people here that really want to learn about how to make things uh, and how to, how to still have a life if you have kids or, or you're busy with work or things like that. I, uh, I think it's really important to understand that you still have a true sense of self when you're, uh, when you're living your life. And it's taken me a long time to kind of understand uh, who I am and what I need to do with my life. So as the videos go on, I kind of like to share a little bit of that information with you guys. You are my community. You're the ones that give me the feedback. You guys are the ones that let me know what you want this channel to be. So for that, I appreciate you. If you guys have any suggestions for like upcoming builds, let me do it down in the comments down below. I mean, I've got a nice long list of things that I want to make, but if there's something that people keep saying over and over they want to see, I'm definitely down for that. I'm definitely down for doing more table cards, really. I just didn't think that would be super interesting, but apparently enough people out there want to see uh, more carvings and tabletops. I'll absolutely do that. I love doing that. But guys, thanks for coming along on this journey with me. I really appreciate having you around. Until next time, I still need an outro. Now let's get to work.